Good morning, everyone. As always, what you're supposed to do, place your cross on first. David had no problem putting his cross on first, second, third. Every time he felt the need to put his cross on, he put it on. Read Psalms. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for watching over me throughout the night. Watch it. Thank you for waking me up this morning, Lord Jesus. I ask you to continue to work on my wife, our household, Lord Jesus, the households around us. Lord Jesus, I ask you to continue to work on my family. Continue to work on those who sit on my mind. Lord Jesus, I thank you for waking me up again. I thank you for everything that you do for me. Give me a clear mind. Give me understanding. Lord Jesus, I ask you to send your Holy Spirit into my heart and my soul today so I can bring forth this word in all honesty and all truth. Not my will be done, Lord Jesus, but your will. Send me, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today I'm going to read from Psalms. Psalms. Think about Psalms. A lot of people don't understand this is music. Music to my ears. And it's crazy. You rarely hear gospel music like this anymore. Or music like this. Now listen to this prayer, this psalm. But this is a prayer here. 86. Bow down thy ear, O Lord. Hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. O Lord my God, save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Unto thee what? Daily. Rejoice the soul of thy servant for unto thee. So if he cried unto thee daily, it ain't even enough psalms in here. Rejoice the soul of thy servant for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive, and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon him, and plenteous to merciful to all them that call upon him, and plenteous to merciful to all them that call upon him. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplication. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. Uh, when you first hear that, you can be like, what? What? David is giving the homage to other gods. No, he ain't. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great, and thou and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. O God, the proud are risen against me, and the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul and have not set thee before them. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, plenteous in mercy and truth. You see that word a lot in the Bible. Suffering. O turn it to me, and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant, and save the son of thine handmaid. Show me for a token of good, that they which hate me may see it, and be ashamed, because thou, Lord, has hoped me, and comforted me. Why is he trying to get, be shown as a token for good, so people can trust in the Lord, and see that the Lord is my deliverer? That's what it's all about. If you read Psalms frontwards and backwards, you're going to see a lot of prayers in there. A lot of times when David called out and some of the musicians called out to the Lord, but you never see them praying about earthly riches. Don't you find that kind of strange in a good way? But you can learn a lot from Psalms. Let's go to Psalm 18. Let's see how different. This is all the way in 80 something, 86. Let's see what 18 says. So 18 starting from verse 24. So starting with 1824. Therefore have the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself 
merciful. With the upright man, thou shalt show thyself upright. With the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure. And with the forward, thou wilt show thyself forward. For thou wilt save the afflicted people, but will bring down high looks. For thou wilt light my candle, the Lord my God would enlighten my darkness. Hmm. Lighten my darkness. For thee I have run through a troop, and my, by my God have I leaped over a wall. As for my God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is buckler to all those that trust in him. Sound like the armor of God. For who is God save the Lord? Or who is the rock save our God? It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. All honor and glory go to God. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon high places. He teacheth my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken in by, by my arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation. Oh, sounds like the armor of God. And thy right hand have holden me up, and thy gentleness have made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, that my feet did not slip. Yes, you still don't see anything about riches in here. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. I have wounded them that were not able to rise. They are fallen under my feet. For thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. I have subdued under me those that rose up against me. Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. Because if they hate him, if they are, if, if God be for us, who can be against us? So if they hate David, they hate the Lord. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord. But he answered them not. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, and thou hast made me the head of the heathen. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. The strangers shall fade away and be afraid of their close places. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God that avenges me and subdueth the people under me. He is not taking credit. He delivered me from my enemies. Yea, thou lifted me up above all those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. Great deliverance giveth he to his king, and show of mercy to his anointed, to David. To his seed forever more. Just want to leave, read a few psalms in there. Let you know something. But this title of this psalm, it's a it's a the chief musician, a psalm of David, a servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the works, words of this song. And the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies, and from the hand of Saul, and he said, It was a song. Wow, people. Oh, let's start the day off right. You see, I hear a lot of gospel music today. How did David so praise to the Lord? He talked about his wonders worse. He talked about how God delivered him from his enemies, how he stumped them under his feet and all this and that. But it's like you make music like that. Oh, people got a problem with it. You ain't giving God no honor. Huh? You must ain't read Psalms. You must ain't read Psalms because most music now don't want to talk about the God that avenges, the God that saves His anointed. Nobody want to talk about that. I watch and listen to a lot of worship songs that worship God, but if you see a difference from the Psalms and the songs in the Bible and the song and the Psalms now. Okay, I can sing a song and say, we worship the old Lord. We worship the old Lord. That's all I'm going to say. We worship the old Lord. How do you worship him? You talk of his glorious works. You talk of his wonderful works. You talk about when he delivered you from that storm. You talk about when he delivered you from your enemies. You talk about things of such. You show why you worship the Lord. 
But you don't hear these type songs no more. Why? I don't understand. I don't understand. I had read Psalm 15 this morning, so 15 or 16, before I got to, I mean, no, 84, I think, before I got to 86, and and David was talking about, he was telling the, the psalmist, was talking about all the wonderful things God did for the people of Egypt and how they kept turning back from him and how God would rain down meat from heaven for them, I mean, manna from heaven. And he said something that, caught my eye caught my ears he said they lusted for more meat they wouldn't they wasn't content with the manner and they provoked him by from to anger by lusting for more meat that was a I was like what it made me think about some things a lot of prayers are not being answered because people are just lusting and listen they want more and more and more they're never satisfied with what God has given them but if you read through the Psalms you how often you rarely hear David talk about riches finances we talk about God delivering him and helping him he talked about deliverance from his enemies deliverance from the tones that speak against him it's like a spiritual war going on it's like David wasn't even focused on none of the the riches that God has given him that wasn't the primary focus the primary focus was like Lord I need help I need help from my enemies out here. They whispered, God favored me. Where do you think they get this stuff from? Because a Christian is going to go through trials and tribulations because we set God as our head and the heathen don't. And they're against us. Let him tr save you since you trusted, since you delight up in him. Like God is not going to, like mocking God. Let your God save you. Well, if you read, David was delivered from every last foe he had. Every last foe. Yeah, he may have had to run a few times. He may have had to jump ship a few times it's, it's so many different ways to be saved from the Lord you ain't got to fight all battles some battles you might have to run from some people you might have to run from and that's cool that's cool every battle you don't face head on some battles you walk away from God knows but these are songs these are prayers and most of the prayers are against what? Most of the prayers are he's going through spiritual warfare, trying to get deliverance from his enemies. A man, after God's own heart, went through so much for God. Long suffering, patience, mercy, grace. He said, I'm going to talk about it. So many songs, I'm going to talk about I'm going to let your words be known to the next generation. And one of them, he was like, I'm basically telling this story to my generation. He said, keep these, tell my stories to the next generation. Tell what happened in Egypt. Tell people God's mercy, love, grace, anger, wrath, all these things. Tell people about the power of God. You know why a lot of people don't fear God now? They don't talk about his power. Power goes two ways, more than, I mean more than one way. They talk about God dividing the Red Sea. 
pardon it. But what happened after he derived the Red Sea? He, he showed mercy to those that love him. They, we let them walk through. But what happened to the people that were pursuing against God's people, whom he was trying to deliver? They were destroyed. That's God's power too. He showed his power two ways. He saved them and destroyed his enemies. But you see that a lot in Psalms. Why don't nobody want to talk about it? Why don't nobody want to talk songs, sing songs like that? You know, God has compelled me to write a lot of music. And I learned a lot from the Bible. I learned a lot of, from David. How he wrote. Because I went through a lot of battles so when I just had to call upon the Lord and I know the Lord delivered me out of every last one so far. I'm 40 years old. I've been pretty delivered by the hands of God. Every time I prayed to him, he delivered me. Every time I prayed for him, he saved me. And it was normal I was fighting against the enemy that was too strong for me. But God saved me every time. I shouldn't write music like that. Hmm. David wrote music like that. People don't understand God's mercy and grace to the full effect. It's key. David was a man after God's own heart because he kept God's statutes, kept God's command, he kept God's words on his mouth. Like I said, he said, I prayed to the Lord daily. Daily. I called upon the Lord daily. We're supposed to call upon the Lord and pray to the Lord daily. Not just Sunday. Not just through a worship song. There's so many other ways to praise the Lord. David grasped this concept. We were blessed through the seed of David. Why? God made a promise to David. And along come Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, through the lineage of David, a man after God's own heart. God never break any promises. Now think in regards to your family. If you call upon the Lord and you stay true to the Lord, He's gonna always leave a remnant. But it starts with you. You ever read in the Bible when God wiped out bloodlines because of rebellion? He wiped out Eli's brothers, I mean sons, and everything. He wiped Eli out for being a prophet for him, for being a man of God for him, for rebellion, for not doing, for not disciplining his sons, not correcting their errors. And God took the anointing from his household and put it in the household of Hannah in the form of Samuel. You know, it has to be very hard for men and women of God to be replaced. And in both cases, in regards to Saul and in regards to Eli, they both knew who their replacements are, were just to know that God has accepted somebody else over you. And we can all can fall victim to this if we don't live right. If we don't stay the course. We can get our inheritance taken away from us. We can get the plans that he has for us taken away. People love to read Jeremiah 29 11. I know the thoughts I have for you. They love to read that, but read the whole context of it. Read the whole part, and you might better understand what's going on. But I'm finna stop in a second. Gotta stop at the store, get a few things, and I'm gonna read that to you. I'm gonna help you understand some things in regards to the Word of God. Yes, God has promises and has mercy to all those that love Him. It's always key to continue to love him 
And he shows you how to love him. You keep his commands. You keep his statutes. You walk how I tell you to walk. I always bring up David because I love David's story. And I love the fact that God didn't show him. He showed him mercy. But he still punished him for what he did. If people don't take that to heart. They won't realize that you can't just walk through this earth doing what you want to do. Especially if you're a man or a woman of God. He said, whom the Lord loves, he chastises. You're not beyond chastisement. You think because you're anointed by God or called by God that if you make a mistake, you not won't be chastised behind it? Yes, you will. But God forgave my sin. Well, how many times have you forgiven your kids and still spanked them? What's the difference from the Lord? But you got this day and age, people don't even whoop their kids, so they don't even understand that part. Why? Because they're not living according to the word of the Lord. Spare the rust, spoil. They rather spoil the child to death than spank them into the right direction. Keep them in line. Or use that voice of yours. You ain't got to always whoop. Your voice, especially a man's voice, does something to children. It keeps them in line. It's time to get in line. Why not? The Bible tells us how to be blessed, how to lead your kids in the right direction so they can be blessed. But yet, we want all the blessings. We want all the promises. We want all the good things that God has for us. But we don't want to be obedient to him or we don't want to be disciplined by him. I don't like the wrathful side of God. So I just want to mess up. I just want the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. I don't want nothing else to come with it. Even Saul, even David said in one of his prayers, if I have done this, if I have brought this iniquity upon myself, Lord, let my enemies overtake me. Even David was, they were so judgmental and righteous in judgment that he said, even if I messed up, let my enemies take over me. Let my enemies destroy me, David said. Let me pause and I will continue.